welcome back to the channel. It's Ashley Nicole, and we are in the classroom today because today we are talking all things school related. For today's video, I really wanted to talk about things that I wish I knew back when I was in school. And I've been out of school for like a year and a half now. So looking back, I realized that there's a lot of things that I didn't know in high school. These are things that I found out once I was in college that I wish I knew back then. And I wish someone would have told me or helped me or coached me or advised me on these things back then. And it would have made high school a lot easier for me. I don't know about you guys, but I was not a good student. Like I was a terrible student actually. It took a lot of effort for me to become a good student. School wasn't easy for me. So if it's easy for you, that's awesome. Congrats. I'm excited for you. If it's not easy for you, don't worry. You're not alone. <laughs> that's the real point I'm trying to talk about today. So here we go. We're going to get into it. These are things that I wish I knew back in high school. This is how you can student like a pro. Let's do it. The first tip is easy. I've said it before. I've said it in all my back to school videos in the past. Anything school related an agenda is necessary and this is not a hard thing to accomplish if you're not an organized person get an agenda if you are an organized person get an agenda it helps get everything that you need to get done every checklist whether it's school related work related or personal it gets it out of your head and onto paper if you want to do all of this on your phone you totally can there's apps for that I personally love writing things down it helps me remember things that being said get an agenda you you're gonna love it. Tips for the agenda. I always used to print out my class schedule and tape it on the inside of my agenda so that I would never forget what class was next because that's happened to all of us. Something that was really hard for me in high school and that I finally figured out in college was note taking. And I just, when I think of high school, I think of lectures and I think of my hand cramping because I'm trying to write everything down so fast. Writing things down, even though it was really helpful for me, I couldn't keep up. I didn't have like a code. Some students had a code that they could write in and they would understand what it was. I couldn't do that. Once I got into college, however, I got my first laptop and I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there. I know a lot of teachers don't like it, but note taking on your computer is game changing and it doesn't have to be a laptop. It could be a tablet. And something I learned that really worked for me was typing my notes in class and then going home and rewriting them out on my notebook. Because again, like I said, my personality is that I enjoy writing things out and it helps me remember them. So that was beneficial for me to actually studying. So I know that shopping for laptops and tablets can be really overwhelming and stressful and it can be a lot. There is the Microsoft Surface Laptop, the Microsoft Surface Book, and the Microsoft Surface Pro. So the Surface Book 2 is super powerful and adaptable from laptop to drawing board to tablet. This is the most powerful and versatile of all three of these products. The Surface Laptop is a perfect lightweight laptop. It's touchscreen, which is amazing and makes it super easy to use and it also has a really, really long battery life. And then the Surface Pro is the most portable of all three. This is a great digital notepad you can use with a pen if you'd rather write your notes, but it also works as a full functioning laptop as well. There are two kinds of learners out there. There's book smart and there's like artistic. The way I studied in high school was weird. I would try to be book smart and read it and understand it and just like reread it and then try to understand it some more and then just, I would just do circles and get nowhere in life. What I found out is that I am what everyone calls a left brainer, I think. It means I'm very artsy and I'm very uh, creative and I need to touch things and be very hands on in order to learn and understand what I'm working with. I can't just read a chapter on microbiology and understand it. I need to actually see it. I need to watch videos on it. God bless YouTube. The whole point I'm making here is there's nothing wrong with being book smart and there's nothing wrong with being creative. Figure out which one you are and then find out how you best work in those categories. So a super awesome feature you can use is OneDrive. This is a program where everything's up in the cloud and you'll never lose anything that you do in OneDrive. So you know how you could be working on a paper and you accidentally forget to save it and you click out and you lost three pages of work that you just finished? That'll never happen when you use a feature like this. And then also it's shareable. So if you have a group project and you guys are all working on the same paper together, you can share the project and you can actually all at once in real time work on the paper together. So we all know about PowerPoint, but something that a lot of people don't know and something that I didn't know for a really long time is that PowerPoint actually works in real time and it's shareable just like OneDrive. So you can actually work on the same PowerPoint with your entire group at the same time and comment back on each other with each other's work because you're seeing them 
put it together. Isn't that crazy? This would actually cut like your actual physical meeting in half because you could do a lot of the work online together. The next thing I wish I knew from the beginning of school was how to study for myself. This goes back to the whole, are you book smart or are you creative? It's really important that you figure that out and you experiment with different ways to study because studying is very personal, I've learned. I went through all of school and didn't realize until my second year of college that studying with classical music puts me in the zone. I had no idea. I thought music would be a distraction to me because I love music and I'm constantly singing along, but I figured out that music without words is so soothing and it really helps me focus on the task at hand. So once I figured that out, I never once studied without the music. Hopefully that's something that could help you guys if you think you're kind of like me in the studying category. Flashcards were also a huge thing that helped me. I found flashcard apps online that I could download onto my phone that were amazing when it came to creating flashcards because it would actually save them also. So at the end of the semester when you needed to go over everything all over again, I could literally go from chapter one all the way down to the end of the semester and study. So that was super helpful. Another thing that I really struggled with in school was feeling nervous in front of friends and in front of classmates. And one thing that I wish that I knew back then was that everyone's nervous. When it came to presentations, I felt like I would get anxiety, I would get sweaty, and I would start shaking. Just thinking of getting in front of the class and talking. If that's you, I really hope that you realize that they're just as nervous as you are. No one's gonna do it perfect, and there's no point in stressing over little things like that when everyone's on the same page. Another thing that I wish I knew was that it's the little things that teachers love. If everyone's turning in a group paper or a group project, make it more personal. Be creative with it. Add your own flair to it. Make your own intro or your own ending to a presentation. If you're turning in a paper, make a cover for it or decorate it somehow or do something fun like that. Teachers love when you put forth a tiny little bit of extra effort and that'll make up for anything you might have messed up on in the actual project or paper itself. Once I figured that out, I started doing that in everything and they, they loved it. They eat it up. Something I wish I had back when I was in school is the surface pen. And this is something that would take your work over the edge when it comes to creativity. So if that's something you're gifted in and it's something you wanna invest in, then I highly recommend something like that because it would put your work over the edge and your teachers would love it. I think it would benefit you a lot. A fun fact about me is that I did not get good grades and it bothered me a lot. I mentioned it earlier already, but school was really hard for me. There were a lot of kids that had fantastic GPAs or straight A's or even A's and B's and I couldn't keep up with that. And it became a personal problem for me. It became like my identity. So something that I would really like to encourage you guys in for this next upcoming semester is to not let a grade define you in any way because I let it define me when I was in school and uh, it really affected how I viewed myself. Some people thrive in school. Some people take tests very easily. Other people like me got test anxiety and could barely find function. <laughs> so um, don't compare yourself to your friends because that's not even fair. You guys have completely different talents and completely different gifts. So don't even do that to yourself. So I don't know exactly how much your teachers would appreciate me telling you this, um, but I'm going to say it anyways, because it's never been more real for me than now. <laughs> but it's this grades and your GPA and all that stuff. It's so important. So take it very seriously, but it's not important outside of school. I'm just going to drop that bomb. <laughs> and hopefully not destroy your whole world. But once you're out of school, no one cares if you got straight A's and no one cares if you had a perfect GPA. So even though it's really important to focus on your GPA and your grades and do well in school, I really want to encourage you guys to also, don't forget to just be in the moment and be a student and be a kid and have fun and don't let school become the center of your universe because pretty quickly after that, work will become the center of your universe. And I wouldn't want you to miss out on all of the fun things that school has to offer. That's my last bit of advice for you guys. And I know that was a little more heavy or than normal, but hopefully that helps you guys out and you guys feel a little bit encouraged and excited for school this year. I'm excited for you guys. Back to school season is such a fun time to be alive. I really hope that this encouraged you guys and I really hope that this helped you guys out. If you guys have any tips or advice that you also would like to share that got you through school or that you work well with when it comes to studying, leave them in the comments below. We'll all help each other out and uh, we'll be a back to school team and it'll be great. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.